So spherical coordinates are yet another alternate coordinate system to describe 3D space. And as with cylindrical coordinates, it's mainly useful for certain curved objects. So to describe a point, again, we are going to use three parameters. And this time, those parameters are going to be rho, theta, and phi. Rho is the distance of the point from the origin. You can think of it as the length of the position vector of the point. And then theta is the same thing as in cylindrical and polar coordinates. It's going to be the angle from the positive x-axis. And phi is the angle that the position vector of the point makes with the positive z-axis. It might be hard to tell from this diagram, the angle phi does not involve the y-axis in any way. It's going from the positive z-axis to the position vector of the point, in the line along which rho is. So just to give you an idea, the coordinates of this point might look something like this. So we go pi fourths out from the x-axis, pi fourths out from the z-axis, and then go forward 3. So we can look at some simple surfaces in spherical coordinates. So if we just have rho is equal to something, say rho equals 1, then that's going to be a sphere. Because it's the collection of all points that have the same distance from the origin which is exactly what a sphere is. And since theta and phi don't appear in the equation, it works for any value of theta and phi. And I forgot to mention, so theta can range from whatever, same as in polar coordinates, but phi can only range from zero to pi. So you know at phi equals zero, that would be pointing straight up along the z-axis, and then at phi equals pi, that would be going straight down the z-axis. So the equation theta equals pi fourths, that would be a plane situated at an angle of pi fourths from the x-axis. Just like how in polar coordinates, if we have theta equals something, that's the equation of a line. And then if we have phi equals an angle, then the equation becomes a cone. Because it's the collection of all the points which are tilted a certain angle from the z-axis. So now we need some equations to convert between rectangular and spherical coordinates. So looking at the diagram, we can see that z is equal to rho times the cosine of phi. That that's the easiest one. And then to get x and y, it's helpful to first get this diagonal along the xy plane. You can think of this as the er uh from cylindrical coordinates. So you can see that this er uh is going to be rho times sine of phi. And then once we have that, you can see that x is going to be that er, uh, rho sine phi, times cosine of theta. And then y is the same thing, but with sine of theta instead. And another useful relation is we can see that x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared, which is just an application of the Pythagorean theorem two times. So say we have this point in spherical coordinates, and we want to convert to rectangular coordinates. So we simply apply the equation. So x is equal to rho, which is 2, times the sine of phi, which is pi thirds, times the cosine of theta, which is pi fourths. And then y is the same thing, but with sine of theta. So since, it's, since theta is pi fourths, it's going to be the same as the x-coordinate. And then z is going to be rho times the cosine of phi. So this is the point in rectangular coordinates. 
And then now say we have a point in rectangular coordinates and we want to convert to spherical coordinates. So the easiest thing to do first is find rho using the x squared plus y squared plus z squared formula. So we find that rho is equal to 4. And then after that, it's easy to find z because it only involves rho and phi, while x and y also involve theta. So we can find that phi is going to be 2 pi third. And then you can use either x or y to find theta. So I'm going to use the y coordinate. Now be careful when finding the x and y coordinates because say for example you used the x coordinate to find theta. Then you would get that cosine theta equals zero. So you might think that theta could be either pi halves or three pi halves. But you have to make sure it also satisfies the y equation because if you picked theta equals 3 pi halves, you would get x equals 0, but then you would also get y equals negative 2 square root 3. So clearly, theta equals pi halves is the only valid answer. Or pi halves plus 2 pi. Because remember, in polar coordinates, you actually have an infinite number of ways to represent a point because you can always just add 2 pi to theta.